David, welcome back. How are you doing? This is great. I mean, I can't believe we're starting season four. Can year. you believe it? Season four. It's uh, those three years went by so quick. Uh, so, so much exciting stuff happened in those three years. I don't think we ever would have imagined that we'd still be going. It's great. And we're grateful. And uh, the podcast is growing and growing. And, and, and one of the things that we learned over the past three years, we did a poll this past year and took some surveys and tried to figure out what it was that people were really interested in. And a lot of people were just revealing to us that they wanted more things about uh, the faith, understanding the faith better, uh, components of the faith that were confusing. So um, we're going to share something that is pretty logical in, 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 in this upcoming season is the creed. Right. You know, a lot of people recite the creed every Sunday, and many people, it's just, it's like rote, right? They don't really look at what they're actually saying. As a matter of fact, someone came up to me the other day. They think I'm a theological expert because I'm here at Array of Hope. It's really because you taught me much of what I know. <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> so they asked me, hey, Mario, so, you know, did Jesus really go to hell? And, you know, and I said, well, we're doing a whole series on the creed this upcoming season. You should listen in. Another person the other day just came to me, wait, we're, our bodies will resurrect, you right. know? And I, and I said, yeah, it's in the creed and it's in our teachings of our church. So you got to listen to the upcoming season. So I thought doing the creed and you agreed would be a good way to kind of embody a cumulative sense of what the church teaches. And the creed is perfect for that. Absolutely. And not only what the creed says in an explicit way, but also what's implied in the articles of the creed. So what we'll find is that the creed covers more than what it seems to only say on the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's important too, because many people could try to reduce the faith, or at least the main elements of the faith, to only the articles in the creed when those articles imply other teachings that also must be held. So we'll get into all that. We're going to get all that. And I think we're going to include some of those things in the show notes uh, regarding what the doctors of the church say, the fathers of the church say, so and also the popes and the various catechisms. So uh, any things that come up that are really things that we want to hold on to will be in the show notes. Great. So this is awesome. Um, so Dave, how did the creed first start? And, and what is a creed, by the way? So the word creed comes from the Latin credo, which means I believe. So in the most simplistic way, I guess you could say a creed is a list of beliefs or a way in which we affirm what we believe. I'll push back against that. I'll also want to develop the idea of what we mean by I believe, because it's not necessarily I believe as one belief among many possible beliefs. So that's first. And then secondly, the creed was called in the early church, the symbol of faith. And that's important too, because a symbol stands for something. In other words, the articles of the creed are not the only things that are beliefs. They are fundamental beliefs, but they stand for the faith in total. I mean, we do proclaim it. There's a psychology a, a component where we're, we're voicing it out loud. Uh, we're proclaiming it as a church. But there are, you know, in church, we have two creeds that we recite, right? The Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed. There are similarities, but they're very different in parts. So maybe you could share what the differences are. Okay, so the first creed was the Apostles' Creed. There may be some debate about how the Apostles' Creed developed, but I think it's pretty safe to say that it goes back to the Apostles. That's why it's named the Apostles' Creed. Right. And that was back in the first council, right? In the 300s or something like that? That was Nicaea. So that's the Nicene Creed. Oh, So okay. the, the Apostles' Creed goes back you even, know, before to, that. even before that. Okay, cool. So it may have taken its present form in and around the year 100, but it certainly existed prior to that mm -hmm. in the apostolic age, and it was probably a baptismal creed and put in question and answer format. So if you even go to a baptism today, there's going to be questions and answers. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Yes, or I do, right? You'll see that at Easter time, that we profess our faith in the way of a question and answer format. That's probably the earliest form of that creed. The Nicene Creed, which was developed by the Council Fathers at the Council of Nicaea in and around the year 325, 
was an elaboration of the Apostles' Creed. And it was developed specifically to answer a particularly pesky heresy at the time called Arianism. Right. So how it elaborates on the Apostles' Creed is specifically speaking to what it's trying to answer in the that heresy period. of Arianism. Interesting. And it expanded parts of the Apostles' Creed in order to really qualify them and explicate them further. In the Nicene Creed, wasn't there a lot of things about the divinity of Christ? Well, yes, and specifically because Bishop Arius denied the divinity of Christ. So that whole God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, that's all in there as a way of saying, no, Arius, Jesus is fully divine in addition to being fully gotcha. human. So we'll cover that when we get to that part of the creed, but that is a unique feature of the Nicene Creed versus the Apostles' Creed. Now, not to throw too much of a wrench in the works, but the creed we actually say at Sunday Mass is often referred to as the Nicene Creed, but it's got other parts of other councils stuck in. Right. So it's not the Nicene Creed as the Nicene Fathers developed it, but as it was further developed by, for example, the Council of Constantinople, and even later on, the Council of Chalcedon. So, yeah. Hey, you know, this <laughs> comes to mind. Why is it, who determines what creed we actually say? Is it liturgical? Is it up to the pastor? Is it up to the bishop? Because it does vary. Yeah. Really, it's up to the bishop of a diocese, whether it's the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. The creed, though, that was traditionally said was always the Nicene Creed. So that one is, I would argue, the one that's more proper to the Mass, just because that's the one that most traditionally has been part of the liturgy. Good to know. Good to know. Well, um, I mean, this is cool. I mean, I'm, I'm excited that we're doing this, you know, and kind of diving deep into understanding. I mean, they, they're, they're simple statements, but there's a lot to ingest and and go deep upon every statement that is said in those creeds. That's right. And I'm still trying to figure out how we're going to get to it. Oh, uh, we'll get to it. <laughs> We're going to cut you short. Yeah, that's We're going right. to cut you yes, short yes, in the yes, edit. Yes, right. Is that a short joke? Stop that. So I'm really excited that we're going to be putting this in the overall schedule of the Reason for Hope podcast. It's really good. It's very informative. Everybody just stand by. we got a lot of great stuff coming your way.